Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to install DHCP on our test DC. I was originally going to do Active Directory first, but it doesn't have an IP address, so I figured it might be smart to sort that out first. Although, I am statically going to assign it an IP address. First up, I'm going to open up our virtual machine, go to Start, type Control, and select control panel. I'm going to change the view bar to small icons. Go to network and sharing center. Change adapter settings and then double click on the adapter. I'm then going to go down to properties. I'm going to turn off IP version 6 and select IP version 4. Select properties and use the following IP address. Just going to pick an address range that I know is not in use on my network and we'll give this the IP address of 100. Leave the subnet mask as default which will give us access to 254 usable addresses and we'll set a default gateway. It's not going to be routable to the internet but I'm going to set one for now anyway in case I decide to change that. This is going to be our preferred DNS server. So we might actually put in 127.0.0.1 which is our local IP address. Select OK and close. And we'll close that window and these other two. Now to do DHCP we're going to go back to the start menu and select server manager. going to click don't show this message again and we're going to go to manage add roles and features skip this page by default next and then we're going to select role based or feature based installation better give our server a name before we continue so I might just cancel out of that open up a file explorer Right click on this PC and go to properties, click change settings, click change and we'll give it a name of test-dc. We're just going to leave that in a work group at the moment because we don't have a domain set up. Select OK and close and restart. While this is booting we'll just talk a little bit more about DHCP. The purpose of DHCP is to serve out IP addresses to clients on your network. DHCP actually stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, which it will dynamically assign an IP address to other devices on your network. This is like when you plug a computer into your ADSL or VDSL modem or router that you have at home and your phone or computer or whichever automatically picks up an IP address. The router has a DHCP server on it but in most enterprise environments then you would set up DHCP on a Windows server or, or a Linux server. I'm going to log back in. There's some other good things you can do with DHCP which I'll cover in a bit more of an another advanced topic such as tagging ports for phones setting up other DHCP options and having a failover or load balancing of two DHCP servers. Okay, we'll go back to manage, add roles and features. While this bar is going across you can't do anything. Okay, now we'll select roles based, role based or feature based installation. Select next. We can now see that our computer name has changed. We'll select next again and then we're going to select the checkbox next to DHCP server and add the required features and select next. We're not going to touch any of the other features here. We'll just select next again and next and then install. While this is happening, 
I might just fire up another virtual machine so we can test that it's actually getting an IP address. Okay, now the feature is installed, it's asking for some configuration required. So we'll just click on close and we can see the little bang on the notifications up here. If we click on that and complete DHCP configuration. The following steps will perform to complete the configuration of the DHCP server on the target computer. Create the following security groups for delegation of the DHCP server. So what this is going to do is create some security groups on the computer. So we will commit to that and we'll select close. We'll just close that off and give it a restart. We'll just log that back in. I'm just going to right click on the start menu and go to computer management. Just select local users and groups and select groups. We can now see the DHCP administrators and users. Just close that back off. Now we'll go to tools and DHCP. Just maximize that and drop down under test DC. Now we can see we've got IP version 4 and IP version 6. So if we select IP version 4 and select new scope, this is how we're going to create the scope for distributing the IP addresses. Let's give it a name as whatever you like, test network, and select next. Now it's asking for the range of IP addresses that the scope will distribute. So we set our IP address to 192.168.2.1 up all the way until 192.168.2.255. We'll leave our subnet mask as 255.255.255 which will give us 250 six addresses technically and select next it doesn't like it's actually complaining here because I've set it as 255 dot 1 and dot 255 are the network ID and the broadcast address so I'll just change that to 254 and select next now it's asking would we like to exclude any IP addresses so the IP address we set on this server was, I believe, 100. Dot 100. So we're going to exclude that so it's not issued to any of our clients. I'm also going to exclude IP address number one. just in case we end up with a router. Then I'm going to select next. It's now asking us for the duration of the scope leases. So what this means is how long will a client potentially hold that address? So if it gets an IP address today, will it still have it tomorrow? This generally isn't an issue on certain private networks, but it can become a problem when you're specified a particular IP range that you have to use as a part of the WAN and you don't want computers to hold on to their addresses for too long. But in this scenario we're going to leave it at the default of 8, select next and would you like to configure the DHCP options for this scope now? Sure why not. I'm going to add an IP address for the router which we don't have yet but we'll set that to .2.1, select next. It's now asking about the DNS server that we're going to use. We actually don't have that set up yet but it is going to be on the same server so I'm just going to leave that as dot 100 and select next. I'm not going to bother with a win server 
we don't particularly use them these days in modern networks. So I'll just select next and we're going to activate the scope and click finish. Now while the server that we started up here is nearly done, so I'll just set it a password and click finish. I'm just going to go down now and drop down the little arrow next to the scope and we can see that we have the address pool. So this is the addresses that are available for distribution and this is the addresses that have been excluded from distribution. When a client connects you'll find that it pops up in address leases which our new server has actually just got an IP address of dot two. So if I just log that server in we'll be able to check the address. What you can also find on here is the MAC address of the client. So if we go to Unique ID, we'll find that this is the MAC address. Let's say we want this server to never change its IP address. Sometimes you do this with stuff like printers or phones, stuff that you want to remain on the same address. You can just right click on that client IP, select Add to Reservation, and you can now see that the lease has converted successfully to reservation. What that will actually do is it will do it based on the MAC address. So if I now select reservations, we will see that we have a reservation here. And if we right click on that reservation and go to properties, then we can see the MAC address. It's going to select OK. And we can also see our scope options here. The server options is for when all of the scopes that you might potentially have on your network are going to have the same setting. So if they're always going to have the same DNS server, you can set it in there and that will apply to all of the scopes. But in this scenario, we're only having one scope, so we're just going to leave them in the scope options. If you right click in scope options, you can go to configuration options and there's a bunch more settings that you can set. But we might go over some of them in the future. If we just go back to our test client and select control panel and we'll change the view by category to small icons and go to network and sharing center bring up our adapter double click on the adapter and just go to details then we can see that our client here or our new computer has got an IP address just for curiosity, we'll test some connectivity between our server and our client. As we can see, it's not responding. That would probably be because the firewall's turned on. Just go into control panel. Windows Defender Firewall. Advanced. Inbound rules. And we will look for the IGMP. Or the echo request IGMP v4. We'll enable that and we'll just run that ping again. And now we can see we have connectivity. So that's how you set up a very, very basic DHCP server. And I'm going to end the video there. So I'll see you later, guys.